empty bar. Sound like I could hear the people in the music from the night before. Still here. And that's just like the blues. It's still here. Part of history, culture, of course, feelings. Once my old friend Lightning Hawkins said, the blues dwells with you every day and everywhere. And when you get that sad feeling, you can go tell the whole world you ain't got nothing but the blues. At the time, I they was just regular people around the house, you know. It was like, you know, I I only knew about it since I'd been grown that uh, I was around like people legends, you know, and um, they was always around because they was friends of my father, Rafe O'Neill, and um, now I really appreciated. Then it was just, oh here here come this guy, here come Lazy, 
Can you tell me a little about who were the people who influenced you as far as blues you played? Well, people like Lazy Lester, my father, Rayful, um, Slim Harpo, James Johnson, Rudolph Richard. He's, they was Slim Harpo original band and also played my father band. And I just grew up around hearing them on Sundays playing live on the radio. On the radio. My father used to play every Sunday live at uh, this little radio station called WXOK. And, uh, I used to lay on the floor and stick my ear by the radio. You know, that's my dad. He was the first person who gave you a harp to play. Yeah, Slim Harper was the first person, but it, he, it was weird. He, he and my father used to play um, share trailers together, so they used to have this old car that they would pull a, a trailer behind, and and for my father worked like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, he'd give the trailer to Slim for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So Slim Harpo was returning the trailer back to my father, and he pulled a trick on me. He opened the trailer up. He said, go inside and see if any equipment left inside the trailer. And I'm about six years old. I get in the trailer, and he closes the door. And so I'm freaking out. Ah, let me out, <laughs> you know. And the only way he could calm me down, he went through the car, and he got a harmonica out, and... And he gave, here, don't cry, I was only playing. You know, he's trying to really calm me down because I was, I was read out of it, you know. Phobia and everything else. So he gave it to me and I went around the back of the house just blowing on this thing. And I, but I didn't start to play it then, but that's where I got my first harmonica from. Do you, you know about Slim Harpo? Do you know him at all? He did the record, um, Scratch My Back. Go like, uh, well. You go, oh, I'm itching, baby. <laughs> and I don't know where to scratch. <laughs> Come here, honey. <laughs> scratch my back. <laughs> Is it the first instrument you learned how to play? Um, no, the piano was the first instrument. My, my father bought a piano from a church for like $25. And he brought it to the house and I learned how to play Tell Me What I Say by Ray Charles. That was my first song. <laughs> and then I went on to move, uh, play bass guitar and then um, lead guitar because that keyboard was too heavy to haul in and out the house, you know? <laughs> it's one of these big old upright pianos. But, uh, I started to play bass guitar when I was about 14 with my father because his bass player, this guy used to always be late, you know, wouldn't show up. So he wanted to cancel out a gig on my father and my dad was getting ready to cancel because the bass player couldn't make it. And my dad had no idea I was sneaking out to the car every Saturday morning when all the equipment be in the station wagon. I would go out and grab the bass and practice on it. I said, hey, I know your stuff, I can handle it. So he took me out on this gig, and the bass player was history. I'd been playing bass, like when I turned 16, I got a call from Buddy Guy and Junior Wells, and I moved to Chicago and uh, started with their band. And that's when I found out that I wanted to play guitar because these guys was traveling all over the country. We was going like to Europe, Nice, Nancy, France. And I go, man, if they can do this with a guitar, I'm get me a guitar.
Um, well, I'm, I play with a guy called Bobby Powell. Uh, he's doing gospel now. I play with Buddy Guy. I play with Professor Longhair. I play with Lightning Hopkins. I play with John Lee Hooker, uh, Big Mama Thornton. I mean, I and I didn't realize I was. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll do the gig. They call me up and I say, let's go. I grab my bass guitar and go out and do it. <laughs> been singing the blues for approximately 15 years. Did you sing any other type of music? All other types. I mean, blues was probably the last genre of music that I started to sing. I don't know why, but it just happened that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you didn't start out singing? Oh, no, 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 no. I was doing a play. No, actually, I was doing a reading mm -hmm. of a play. And while I was in the workshop, a a director was there trying to cast a starring role in a musical called Bessie Smith, Empress of the Blues. And he was frantically searching for an actress slash singer. He couldn't find one anywhere. So the artistic director of the theater said, your, your actress is sitting right out there reading this play. As Soon as the reading is finished, you should talk to her. So he brought me back into the office and um, I was reading this script title over his shoulder and I saw that it involved Bessie Smith. So when he asked me if I sang the blues, my mama always told me to say yes, so I did. I had never sung the blues before in my life. And I've been singing ever since. I won an award. You won an award? Yeah, I won an Adelco Award for my portrayal of Bessie Smith in that production. So I've been singing the blues ever since. Thank you. 
people grinning in your face. Oh, don't you mind people grinning in your face. Oh, bear this in mind. A good friend is hard to find. Oh, don't you mind people grinning in your face. Oh, your mama may talk about you Oh, your brothers and your sisters too They don't know the way you live But they talk about you still Oh, bear this in mind A good friend is hard to find Oh, don't you mind People grinning in your face. Mississippi. Went to school in Memphis, Tennessee, 
So, so who was the guys you played for? Uh, Wilson Pickett, when he made, I found in love. I was there when, uh, when Jimmy Reed made. Don't you know that what, I love you? Jimmy, Jimmy Reed. Reed. Okay. Yeah, but I, I wasn't his regular guitar player. Yeah. I just come there when other guys drunk and don't show up. Yeah. And I get paid for playing. When did you just start playing in the subways? I started playing in the subway. Uh, uh, I think it was in the... I think it was in the 70s, uh, or the 80s, because I was the first one to start. It was me, Mr. Spoons, and Chicken Wing, oh yeah, especially that crazy big fat guy, Chicken Wing, and, uh, and uh, Carolina Slim, yeah, Carolina Slim, Mr. Spoons, we used to have a lot of fun.